hey, I'm going to help you in your manifestation. So just lay down, preferably on the floor or somewhere where your back is completely straight. Um, don't cross any of your body parts. So don't like cross your legs and don't cross your arms. Put your arms by your side, like facing up. And don't have any body part touching the other. Other than that, just be as comfortable as you can. Now I'm going to walk you through this like I've been walking myself through this. I actually recorded one of these for myself and it's been helping me a lot. So, take a deep, deep breath, as deep as you can take it. <laughs> and then hold it for a few seconds and release. More like the, the neuralistic way is to hold it for four to five seconds, but whatever is comfortable, don't strain yourself. This is to be, this is intended to be like the most authentic version of you possible. So there's no, you know, <laughs> no bells and whistles or any of that. No, just keep breathing. And when you're breathing, make certain you're using your diaphragm to pull the air in. And you're not just lifting and lowering your stomach or lifting and lowering your chest. Use your diaphragm. It's below your belly button and above your pubic bone. So kind of in between your dangling or your Kit Kat and <laughs> uh, like two inches maybe below your belly button, depending how long your torso is. Like hold that area in and breathe in. Okay. Now you should be feeling kind of relaxed and kind of silly and comfortable, I'm hoping. So now I'm going to ask you a series of questions and the only thing you have to do is feel. That's the only thing you have to do. You could verbally state to yourself when I ask you a question. Other than that, simply feel it out, okay? So close your eyes. And if you usually have a problem like opening your eyes well, when you're attempting to meditate, put a pillow or like a, a, a small towel or something to hold your eyelids closed. I don't know if you have like those tiny little pillow cushion things or a, a t-shirt over your eyes. And that way you're not focusing on keeping your eyes closed. You're using that extra energy to feel. Even though it's a minute amount of energy, it's actually important for this. So, let's say you're attempting to, you know, even if you're not attempting to, let's go through the entire part from the top of your head. Now, what would it feel like if above your head there was a glowing sphere of a multi-shimmering spectrum of light, whatever color you want it to be, like 12 inches above your head. And it's just very comfortable and very normal for it to be there. What does it feel like to have that there and to not have it there? Usually you don't pay attention to it, right? So pay attention to it now and how does it, in the words of a therapist, how does it make you feel? Maybe it makes you feel like a Sims character. Maybe it makes you feel comfortable. Now, how, how would it feel or seem to you if that glowing orb was sending light down to your scalp and, and your hair and changing your hair color to exactly how you've always wanted it to be. You know when you were growing up and you always knew you looked like something 
I always knew I, I looked like an elf from Lord of the Rings. When I saw Lord of the Rings, my mind was blown. I was like, oh my god, there is my peeps. And then reality sunk in, which is, <laughs> you know, far from it. But what would it feel like if this orb above your head changed your hair color from whatever it is to whatever you wanted it to be? What would you feel like right now if your hair color was that way already? Your hair texture, your hair length, your hair density, or whatever you want to do with your scalp hair. What would it feel like if it was actually already done right now and you never ever ever had to listen to any subliminal or do any affirmations or ever condition your hair again? Or ever dye your hair none of it you are you already have the perfect hair what do you as a human being or any being that you are feel like with your ideal scalp hair I would feel gorgeous I feel like a fantasy comic book character like Storm or Jean Grey <laughs> what would you feel like how would your personality be different right now if you had your ideal hair? How is your personality different from, from the ideal version of your personality without having that hair? Are you aware now of the difference between your current personality with your current hair and your other personality with your ideal hair? and what that different energetic feeling is. Don't think about it. Don't use words in your head. Don't try to analyze it. Feel it. You don't have to get specific with feeling your hair on your shoulders or feeling your, you know, whatever. No. How do you feel? Like you accomplished something, right? Like you, like you're relieved in a way. Now, what if you're, you've been wanting to change your eye color? What if that glowing ball above your head is now shining light on your eyes and you're aware now of your current eye color and how you currently feel, right? I mean, you're self-aware, you have to know how you feel right now and how your eyes feel. So, let's say you want to change your eye color to whatever color you want them to be. How would somebody with that, how would the version of you with that eye color feel right now? If that version of you was lying down on the floor or wherever you're lying down doing this, you know, silly meditation, how would that version of you feel with that current, with that eye color as if they were a normal person with normal, like it was just normal for them to have that eye color? Would you feel like a sexier person, a more confident person, maybe more mysterious or earthy or like a free spirited type of version of you? Maybe you'd feel more unique and special or expressive. How is it different from the version of you now? Why do you deny yourself this? Who told you you can't have the eye color that you want? If it's as simple as you, if you can feel how it would feel to have that eye color as if you're emulating that person, why can't you just do it normally for like three days, continuously? Does that bring up feelings of self-worth or laziness or too much work and ugh, what's the point type of thing? Whatever it is, it's okay. Your feelings are completely justified. There is nothing wrong with how you're feeling either way. 
No one can tell you what someone with purple eyes feels like compared to what someone with brown eyes feels like. It's only your perception. And your perception creates, assists in creating your reality. So if you can change your perception to having purple eyes or green eyes or neon fluorescent, <laughs> you know, whatever eyes, silver, moonlit eyes, you, you can, you know, just feel how it would feel like. Now what if you had your ideal chest? If you like if you wanted bigger boobs or if you wanted a flatter chest if you wanted more hair on your chest or if you wanted no hair on your chest how is the person that has what you want already in your opinion how does that person feel compared to this person that you are now Don't think about it, feel it through. You have a certain knowing on what it feels like to be who you are now. You also have a certain knowing of what it feels like to, to be the version you want to be. You already know what it feels like to be that person. I'm just reminding you. I'm reminding you to remember. So, you know what it feels like to have your ideal hair, your hair color, the amount or the lack of scalp hair, whichever one you prefer, your ideal eyes, the way you feel in your ideal version with those eyes and the hair, your ideal chest. Now what if that light above your head is shining light down to your genitals? What do you feel like with your current genital structure? Not your gender, not your, you know, your sex, not your sexual activity, none of those things. Plain and simple, your Kit Kat or your Dangalang. How do you feel with what you have right now? Don't think about it. Simply feel, put your consciousness into your genital area. How does it feel to have the, the the goods you have now right now nothing special nothing fancy how do you feel how does your name whoever you are feel with your certain package Do you feel like you have to prove something? That you're defending your insides? That you're easily taken advantage of? That it's just there and it's whatever? That it's ugly? That it needs work? That it's fine and you don't really care anyway, one way or another? Or do you feel like it's beautiful and perfect and fantastic or whatever it is and you're completely happy to have what you have and you, you use it often? Everything's okay. There is no wrong answer. I don't even know what you're answering, so I can't tell you if it's wrong or right anyway. <laughs> okay. Now, what if you had the perfect size or the perfect shape? or the, the opposite genitals of what you have now, or a combination of both, perfectly placed however you want them. You could even have two penises or two vaginas. You can have a vagina going, you know, the entrance being in between your scrotum, or you can have whatever you can imagine. How would it feel to have your perfect, perfect, genital structure regardless of what anybody has ever told you you can have or can't have. If you were writing yourself as a superhero and your superhero has super genitals, how does this superhero with superhero genitals feel like to you? Do you feel freer? Do you feel more 
confident, more fun, more spontaneous, more active, more excited, more sexually excited, more eager to learn and to experience life. Have you noticed that most women, most people with vaginas, usually feel like they're being taken advantage of or that they constantly have to accept and receive, while most people with penises usually feel very protective and defensive and, you know, like they're always ready for a fight of some kind or to defend a point or, you know, to just get it done. It's a fundamental thing and it has nothing to do with your gender. It has to do with what you perceive when you look down there. Because one is open and the other one is pointing the other way. Away from your insides. Do you see now? Do you feel? Can you comprehend internally why you have made the choice that you've made to express your physical body with the expressions that you currently have. Let's do another fun one. Let's be aware of your height. However tall or short you are is completely irrelevant. But how would you feel right now if you were standing next to someone who is six feet and seven inches tall? Would you feel dwarfed and tiny and like you're a little pixie and need to be protected and held and you're the fun little spunky friend? or the princess that needs to be swooned and wound over, or the, the tiny little spunky, you know, rogue type of character. Or the joker, or the, the ranger type of guy. Now what if you were the six foot seven character? This chair makes the weirdest noises. Ow, son of a bitch. <laughs> What if you were the the six foot seven character? Would you feel like you have to protect everybody all the time? I swear to God, leather chairs, you guys, leather chairs sound like you just ate a can of beans, and I didn't. I had apple pie. <laughs> okay. I'm going to not move and we're going to continue this. <sighs> Do you see the point I'm attempting to convey to you? Your physical body is an expression of your emotional state, the way you think and the way you feel, like all of it. You don't have to be six foot seven to be confident. You don't have to be five foot two to feel like a diminutive, you know, a demure little princess. A six foot seven princess can be a princess, and a you know four foot four hobbit can be the the best ruler and warrior ever known to mankind. You can have the perfect ideal hair and eyebrows and eyelashes and your perfect genitals because you can already feel what it would be like to have them now. So why are you denying yourself? Why make the journey to, or the experience, or the accomplishment of what it is that you truly know yourself to be 
Why make it take such a long time? Time is an illusion, so why even bother with the concept of time? All you're doing is attempting to convince your subconscious, and well, actually, all you're doing is attempting to allow yourself consciously to accept what the subconscious already has for you. That's all it is. I'm totally moving in the chair, so if you hear <laughs> whoopee cushion sounds, I swear to God. <laughs> I need a better chair. Man, I miss my chair. <sighs> Manifest a throne, not the iron throne. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to end this here because this is ridiculous and I hope it's helped you. Stop denying yourself, okay? I was sitting here looking at videos and just asking myself random, like, different questions regarding different topics I wanted to make supplementals for, and I was watching videos on, on like, history and different ethnicities and cultures, and something, like, dawned on me, or in me, We've been chasing our own tails for thousands of years for things we can have right now. There's no point in wasting time. If you love someone, love them. Whether they love you back or not is irrelevant. You are the one loving. You're the body that feels that love, so continue to feel it. If you miss someone and they're not talking to you, <laughs> I know about that. It, just keep missing them. There's, or, you know, release the, the sadness with it, but don't allow yourself to think that you have to stop missing someone. I mean, it's better if you actually accept that they're in your life and stop being sad. But that'll happen when you're ready to let the sadness go. Until then, miss them. That missing feeling is a reminder to you that you really, really loved someone, and still do. If you, if you want to, to have a really good income, stop wasting your time wishing for it, and actually stop wasting your experiences in this life, pretending that you don't have it, and spend time imagining, like replace the time you spend throughout the day, like instead of watching two YouTube videos, instead of that, spend those five, ten minutes or whatever daydreaming as if you're already that rich person. Visualize, imagine, feel what it would be like to have your body now as if you are that, you know, Galadriel character, as if you are the, the <laughs> lord of the whatever character you want to be, the best ranger, the best... <laughs> I was watching Lord of the Rings earlier. Sorry for all the, the Lord of the Rings analogies. <laughs> Just be who you are, okay? That's another reason why I'm not going to edit this or anything, including the weird fart sounds, the stupid chair is making. I swear to God, this is so ridiculous. <laughs> but seriously... Quit being mean to yourself. You know what you want. You know what the problem is. When you're depressed and you're having panic attacks and you're, you know, self-sabotaging and you're just pretending you don't know how to help yourself, everybody does that. That's why there's so many freaking videos on YouTube. I mean, geez, I have one video that says click here and just breathe. God help. I'm not going to say God. Source help you, okay? Really, whenever you get into those moods, I don't care if you don't want to watch it or if whatever, just click it and let it play. Whatever you do throughout the time that, that video is running, subconsciously and consciously, you're going to be aware that you have a method to bring you back to center. 
So when you're feeling grumpy, when you're feeling grouchy, when you're feeling moody, when you're feeling totally overwhelmed with sexual energy, when you're feeling afraid and you're just whatever, don't indulge in those feelings because when you indulge in them, you send thought waves and signals out and those thought waves and signals attract entities to you or other thought forms and then the thought forms turn into entities. It's like Pokemon in the astral realms, you guys. Seriously. So just click that video and just listen. Just watch and breathe. Allow, allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and get it out of you. I I personally have had an issue with like feeling a certain emotion and then the emotions connected to that like a merry-go-round so I'll be like sad and then I'll be happy or not happy I mean sad and then you know kind of okay and then kind of just missing and then kind of just uh and it just goes round and round because somehow I've made a pattern internally to to go from one to the other, but avoid the positive spectrum. It's like whack-a-mole, basically. And what I've been doing lately is popping up my love letter to source video or the click this and just breathe video. And then it irritates me that I'm playing those videos. And then I realize, oh, a new feeling, which is completely out of the circle of the, <laughs> the whack-a-mole I've been feeling, and then that snaps me back into a neutral state because I realize how absurd I've been. So I hope it helps you. Don't make such a big deal out of wanting bigger boobs or a flat chest or a vagina or a penis. Don't make such a big deal out of exes or future husbands or being cheated on or cheating on someone or money or where you live or how, what you're eating well don't eat meat those things have feelings <laughs> but really like don't make such a big deal out of it what you should be making a really big deal about is how much you love yourself how much you feel for yourself how much you have compassion and empathy within you for your own body and everything you've been through how much you appreciate your entire existence I mean really do you do you even take like two minutes a day or like 10 seconds a day to appreciate everything you've been through or even to acknowledge all the bacteria in your body that outnumbers you I think ten, outnumbers your physical cells 10 to 1 I think that's the ratio do you take like 10 seconds a day to just hold your stomach and be like, thank you, stomach and bacteria in there for doing everything to keep me alive. From digesting your food to giving you nervous system impulses to help you function as a human being. That all happens in your gut. It doesn't happen in your brain. Your gut center is what the nervous system and the intestinal tubes, they're the first things created when you're a seed baby in your mom's belly. There's a video that Dorothy Rowe has on her channel. She explained this beautifully. But your nervous system is one of the first things made. So, you should really thank your microbiome thing inside you. Or your teeth. I mean, really. I've realized lately how much I've taken mine for granted. And then I've spent so much time trying to fix them, and I'm just like, ugh. But it's just energy. And I realized the lack of expression and the lack of self-expression and all of these things that I haven't sent through my being, I've just kept them bottled up. You should really thank your body. You should thank your, your history, your possible futures. And if you're listening to all these subliminals, thank your freaking brain for processing all of these affirmations. 
I mean, if you've even listened to one of my subliminals, you've listened to more than a million affirmations if you've listened to it for more than 10 minutes. That's a lot of things your body's doing to help you. You should say thank you to your body. And really allow yourself to be loved. This is especially important to the guys. You got you know, like I've I'm learning more and more how much the male energy is afraid of being loved, while the female energy doesn't know how to love because she has it has to love a it's like approaching a scared animal that's wounded. You can't approach it with cookies and, and a hand basket or a hug. You have to approach it as if you're, you know, inching towards something that's terrified and wounded. So the male energy doesn't know how to receive love or give love because it's in a state of fear. And the female energy doesn't know how to give love or receive love because it's attempting to heal the fear. So no one really knows how to love each other. It's ridiculous. Anyway. This has gone on long enough. I, I intend that this video have served you for your best and most amazing possible outcome. And like Activation Vibration Channel says, everything is working out. Best case scenario. Let that be your mantra because it's amazing. There's different variations to it, however you want to say it, but since everyone's using the same phrase, it builds a momentum of energy across the entire fabric of, of whatchamacallits and dangalangs and Kit Kats. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go probably play some Elder Scrolls online or something. Because that thing has been asleep all day. I've cleaned the house. I have escorted the plants outside because they have been a breeding ground for fruit flies and they're annoying me when they fly around my head and I'm trying to watch something and then suddenly there's like this buzz it's so annoying anyway <laughs> I'm gonna go have an awesome time whatever time it is for you and please Hold your belly and say thank you to your stomach. It, you don't, you really don't comprehend the importance and magnitude and absolute essentialness of your intestines.